What's up everyone? This is Spooky and I'm here with another guide for Tekken 8. This one was highly requested by all of you at home and it's a guide on using wake up attacks as well as how to deal with the opponent's wake up attacks. I'll be going in depth and giving tips on generic wake up options as well as several character specific ones. If you stick around until the very end, I will also give you my 3 advanced tips for using your wake ups as well as dealing with the opponent's wake ups. There are 4 types of grounded states in Tekken 8 and each one affects how you can wake up. Face up feet towards is one of the most common knockdowns. There is also face down feet towards which looks like this. This is face up feet away and finally this is face down feet away. Each grounded state has its own nuances but generally Face up feet towards is the best position for you as a defender because it gives you access to the most moves and tactics. Your up wake up and back slide wake up are also a bit safer while face up feet towards. Whenever I talk about grounded states, remember these and come back to reference this section if you need to. Each character also has at least one move you can use to flip the opponent's state, which is useful for limiting their wake up options and forcing ground techs in your favor. Now that you understand the various knockdowns, let's talk about ways you can recover before becoming grounded. In game, these are known as ground techniques. Your first ground tech option, and the one you should probably use the most often, is the back quick slide, or back quick roll as it's called in game. You can do this by holding back right as you are knocked down. This works on many types of moves and is good for creating space between you and the opponent. The other tech options like side roll or quick recovery often leave you within striking distance. So use this instead to help keep them at bay. It's also a necessity for escaping otherwise guaranteed spike combos. In this Victor example, he can use heat to add tremendous damage if you attempt to use your other tech options. But by using the back quick slide, you can break up the follow up and prevent Victor's free damage. You can also use this when you are down and the opponent hits you with an OTG attack. You can still block immediately after if you use it this way. In most situations, if you're not sure what kind of wake up to do, this is a good choice for trying to get back on your feet and fighting the opponent safely. Next up is the side tech roll, or side kemi as it's called in game. Press 1 or 2 as you are knocked down to go into the background. Press 3 or 4 to go into the foreground. The side you're facing does not matter, all that matters is whether it's background or foreground that you want to roll. It has a small amount of invincibility, making it a good idea to use when an opponent drops a combo. You can also use the background Ukemi together with sidestep to get around the opponent's pressure when it's too linear. When you tech roll, you can also utilize your while standing moves since you go for crouching to standing. A popular Jun Kazama tactic is to combine this with her 10 frame full crouch one leave you mostly in a crouching state and able to punish their highs or slower attacks. Tech roll can be a safe way to recover, but since it creates less space than back roll, it can leave you in the opponent's optimal mix up range. Just like the back slide, you can also tech roll an OTG to get up quicker. Hold forward as you are knocked down for this kick up recovery attack, which is known in game as quick recovery. It's around plus 2 or plus 3 on hit and small minus on neutral or block, depending on how late it lands. This attack is good to use sparingly as a surprise assault on the opponent, especially when they drop a combo. In rare circumstances, this can also float the opponent, so if you tend to use it, look out for this opportunity and try to capitalize with a float combo. This move has very little reach and it is also a bit slow, making it vulnerable to being floated during the start for a combo. In addition, it is very linear, so if your opponent is predictable with this, it can be sidestepped for a full punish. As a beginner to intermediate player, you should use backslide or the side tech roll most often. However, always using them makes you predictable 
so consider not doing them every time or even staying on the ground and using wake up attacks instead. There are also moves that are untackable, throws, and other situations where you might end up grounded, so let's talk about wake up techniques and attacks. When on the ground, press up to stand in place. Once you are standing, you can block attacks. You can also press down back to wake up the same way, but this makes it a bit easier to low block. You can hold down back to stay crouching and avoid highs or block lows. While using this up get up, you can also utilize your wake up mid kick and wake up low kick, which I'll talk more about soon. I just wanted you to be aware that this is a place you can use them. When you are face up feet towards, this is very hard or impossible to punish. However, in other positions, there is some vulnerable time, so beware of doing this in the opponent's face as they could easily get your side or back. There is also a back roll or backslide get up. Just hold back to perform it. This one is similar to the back tech roll and good for creating space or preparing to block mix ups. When you are face up feet towards, this one is also hard to punish, but it has some vulnerability in other positions. Attack when you have them in a weaker ground position to potentially get their side or back during this. Hold forward for a roll into wake up. I don't recommend using this too often as it's pretty slow. Notably, when using this while face up feet towards or face down feet away, it is easy for the opponent to OTG this, but it's difficult or impossible to launch for a full combo, making it a situational surprise tool. However, when face up feet away or face down feet towards, this has a huge vulnerable period where it can be launched for a combo, making it generally a bad idea. This is one of the cases where being aware of your knockdown state will make a huge difference on how well you can use it. While using forward roll, you can also perform your mid kick and low kick attacks which we'll be talking about soon in this section. Also when using the forward roll, if you are face up feet towards, you can press 1 plus 2 for this cross chops mid attack. It's plus frames on block and knocks down on hit. It's very useful when the opponent is at a long range and difficult to punish even with side steps and sidewalks. The next wake up option is ground roll. Press 1 to roll into the background and then stand up. Press down 1 to roll into the background. If you hold down, you will stay grounded, but switch positions from face up to face down or vice versa. You can combine this with other techniques like ground roll into back wake up, ground roll into wake up kicks, or even extreme examples like ground roll into forward roll. One excellent use of this is putting yourself into face up feet towards, which will allow you the full suite of wake up options, including your spring kick or cross chops. It's also a safer way to use your standard getup. Something to beware of when using this. Normally when you are grounded, only some dedicated attacks can hit you. However, when you use the ground roll, you increase your hurt box giving the opponent a chance of some free damage. Every character has this wake up mid kick. Just press four while grounded to use it. It's always plus nine on hit and minus nine on block, but the startup differs based on your position. Face up feet towards starts at 22 frames. Face down feet towards is 19 frames. Face up feet away is the fastest at 18 frames. And finally, face down feet away is the slowest at 26 frames. Wake up mid kick is very good for stopping aggressive opponents who overextend. It can also occasionally be used to interrupt an opponent who has dropped their combo. You should sometimes mix this up with the wake up low kick as well to keep the opponent guessing. Predictable wake up mid kicks can be defeated in many ways. 
they are very linear, so sidestepping is highly effective. You can also armor through them using a power crush, or make them whiff with backdash or sidestep. Finally, the startup is vulnerable, so you can counter hit it with a faster attack. Every character also has a wake up low kick. Just press 3 while grounded to unleash it. It's always plus 7 on hit and minus 9 on block, but the startup again differs based on your position, although the frame data is similar to the mid kick. Face up feet towards is 22 frames, face down feet towards is 19 frames, face up feet away is also 19 frames, one frame different from the mid kick and face down feet away, again the same as the mid kick at 26 frames. Wake up low kick can also stop opponents who overextend, and unlike the mid kick, it can also defeat some power crushes and deep bursts. However, it has all the rest of the weaknesses of mid kick, like being steppable. Also, since it is a low, you can low parry it as well to guarantee a combo or even low crush it completely for devastating damage. However, you should still mix this in with the mid kick from time to time. Unlike Tekken 7, the wake up mid and low kick do not guarantee any combos in Tekken 8. Up next is the spring kick attack. You can only use this one when face up, feet towards the opponent. Press 3 plus 4 to spring at the opponent feet first. In Tekken 7, this used to knock down, but in Tekken 8, it leaves the opponent standing on hit. It starts at 19 frames, but has a huge active window, ending at 30 frames startup at the tip. At tip range, it is minus 10 on block, while in middle range or up close, it is easily launch punishable. When used well, spring kick is another way to be unpredictable and break up some of the opponent's pressure. In rare circumstances, it can also guarantee a follow-up or a small combo when hitting at the tip range, making it one of the few ways to wake up and get some damage. However, it has many of the same weaknesses as the wake-up kick, being very linear. In addition, it is bad on block, which means the opponent can retaliate, sometimes for big damage. This attack is okay to use when the opponent is out of range of your other wake-up kicks, but is very risky and should be used sparingly. The final generic wake up option that most characters can use is the toe kick or recovery kick as it's called in game. You need to be face up feet towards the opponent to use this. Press down plus 4 to kick at the opponent's shins. It's fast at 13 frames and although it is minus 3 on hit, it creates some distance between you and the opponent. However, it does a pitiful amount of damage and is launch punishable on block. It also has all vulnerabilities of wake up low kick, so you can low parry it or make it whiff and take advantage of the recovery for an easy combo. Overall, this is one of the options you should use the least, as the payoff you get for this is small while the overall risk is quite high. Now, we have discussed all of the generic options that most characters can use. However, some characters have their own special wake-ups, so in this next section, I will cover how to use them, as well as how to counter them when used against you. Alyssa has this special Reboot Meteor Kick, which she can only use when face up feet towards. Press 1 plus 2, 3 to fly at the opponent. This is basically a better version of the Spring Kick attack and knocks down a normal hit. It's minus 10 on block, although in rare circumstances, it can instead be safe at minus 9. This is a good option for her to toss out from time to time and keep you on your toes. But when your opponent is too predictable with this, you can block and punish, or sidestep to make it whiff and just attack the recovery. She can also try to mix you up by using just the reboot without the meteor kick follow up. This is pretty slow and vulnerable to floats, so don't be afraid to attack it and get in some free damage. Overall, this move is a little better than the generic spring kick, but still risky and only should be used sparingly. Devil Jin specifically has a special wake up he can do while face up feet towards called Yomi Gaidi, which automatically transitions to his fly stance. 
once in fly, he has access to a multitude of moves, which can make dealing with this very daunting if you have not encountered it before. You need a specific set of knowledge to deal with this as well as the fly stance in general. So first, I will break down each individual option, then give you some tips for dealing with all or multiple of the options at once. The first option is one, a safe high that starts tornado combos. You can duck the startup completely to nullify this move and punish with a launcher of your own. Fly two is a high unblockable grab with decent range. It is very linear and you can also duck the startup and retaliate on double jump. Fly three is a knockdown mid kick. It also tracks a bit better than some of the other fly options. When blocked up close, you can launch punch this. And from a middle range, you can use a jab or a mid punish. At the tip range, it is safe, so watch out for that. Fly 1 plus 2 is an unblockable laser. Good for catching someone crouching because of Fly 1 or 2. It's slow and extremely linear, so you can sidestep this to turn this hide and retaliate with your own combo. Fly forward 1 plus 2 is basically the same as Fly 1 plus 2, but Delwigen flies to the other side first. This is the only thing he can do that involves flying to the other side, making it easy to react to this with a sidestep and punish. Last but not least, he can also fly without a follow-up. This can be tricky when you're expecting a different option, but has tremendous recovery, giving you a large window to react and punish. Next, I will give some tips on dealing with multiple of the options to minimize how much you have to guess. The absolute best thing you can do in this scenario is a full jump kick. This will chase Double Jin out of the sky and interrupt him no matter which option he chooses. Here I have programmed the CPU to do all the options so you can see how universal this is. If you choose to learn this, never have to fear Devil Jin's fly ever again, whether he uses it as a wake up or as a neutral tool. A second option which is easier to do on demand is a sidestep or side wall. This has a high chance of evading many of the options, but some options can track well to one side. Overall, full jump kick is the best thing to do, but if you can't do that, give sidestepping a try or using a punish for the individual option you expect. Dragonov is another character who is fortunate to have some special wake-ups. First off is this clipping heel hook, which is a special version of the face down, feet towards low kick. It has the same startup at 19 frames, while being plus seven on hit and minus nine on block. However, it has a sweet spot, and if you get a clean hit, it will knock down the opponent. This is not bad to use when the opponent is really close to him while face down. This has all the weaknesses of wake up low kick, so you can high crush this one for a full combo. You can also use low parry to defeat him. Dragonov can also perform his ambush tackle while face down, feet away. Although he needs to be close for this to work, it can be an unexpected way to turn the tide, and he also gets his three way tackle mix up. When Dragonov is not in heat mode, the tackle is breakable or even reversible with 1 plus 2. If you need tips for dealing with tackles, including this move in particular, check out my beginner's guide for dealing with tackles. I'll place a link for you here on screen. This next quick section is about King and his special Whirling Spring Kick. This move is similar to the standard Spring Kick, and new in Tekken 8, King has access to both moves while face up feet towards. Just like the spring kick, this has a variable frame data, but starts at 16 frames, making it 3 frames faster than the standard one. To compensate for the extra speed, this move is terrible on block, while also leaving King in a back turn state. While hard to react to this when King uses it well, you can punish this guaranteed with the throw, since he is back turned and cannot break. You can also block and use your best back turned combo. Up next is a section on Kuma and Panda. These characters got some great changes to their wake up in Tekken 8, with some options now automatically going into Hunting Bear stance. Hunting Bear grab has also had its range greatly buffed. First is the Bear backstroke, 
which can only be done when face up, feet away. This is a safe mid that automatically goes into Hunting Bear stance. It's only minus two on block, and because he ends in stance, your highs will be ineffective. In fact, I recommend either OTG or backing off when Kuma has access to this move, as it is one of the few wake up attacks in the game that favors the defender, giving Kuma lots of tricky ways to avoid your pressure or even punish. If you are a bear player, you should be using this, as the buff makes it very powerful. Complementing the bear backstroke is this bear butterfly move. This is a load that can only be done when face down, feet away. It's plus 6 on hit, minus 12 on block, and also automatically goes into hunting bear stance. It's a terrible idea to ever challenge this move when it hits, as Kuma can take advantage of his plus frames to interrupt you for huge damage. It also cannot be low parried, minimizing the ways that you can counter it. But you can still block and punish this since it is an unsafe low, or back off and re-engage when ready. A good rule for remembering how to block these special Kuma options is, face up it's a mid, face down it's a low. That technique also will cover the next option, bear get up punch. This is a mid that can only be performed while face up, feet towards. It's very slow, starting at 29 frames, but it is heavy plus frames on block. This move automatically transitions to bear sit stance, giving you some mix up as well. However, it has very little range and lots of recovery. So if you want to deal with this option, creating a little space can open up the opportunities you need for big punishment. While face down feet away, bears can also use this hunting shift, which is not on the move list. Just press 3 plus 4 to perform it. You can also immediately do hunting bear attacks. This one is kind of slow, but a good way to get back on your feet when the opponent is far away. So I figured I would include it. Finally, we have the last option for bears and one of the most powerful. When face down, feet away, press forward to roll. This allows you to use the entire bear roll stance move list, although it is rather linear. Where this becomes very powerful is when Kuma or Panda are in heat mode, as they can use both a high guard break or a mid launcher for potential combo opportunities. When Kuma or Panda are not in heat, you can deal with this in the same way as the standard bear roll with side steps or side wall, as all the options available are very linear. When you are forced to block a bear roll in heat mode, ducking the high can give you a full launch combo. The popular two launcher from this can be blocked and punished, helping to swing the 50-50 back into your favor when you guess correctly. Well done everyone, we have covered all of the generic options for wake up as well as many character specific ones. Now I'd like to give you my 3 advanced tips for using and dealing with wake up attacks. Tip number 1 is mix up after blocked wake up kicks. As mentioned earlier, both the wake up mid kick and wake up low kick are minus 9 on block. After blocking these, your opponent will often turtle up. Rather than just retaliating with a jab or a basic mid which is easier to defend, try using your big lows or throws in this moment, when the opponent is more likely to expect your mid and be unprepared. Tip number two is to have options for tech and no tech. In this example, after Victor's throw, I often prime up a running two, which is plus five on block. If my opponent stops waking up to avoid this situation, I can adjust for 4 4 2, give me some nice OTG damage and tempting the opponent to tech roll and be right back in the same situation. Tip number 3 is don't always get up the same way. Because backslide and side tech roll are so powerful, it can be tempting to use these and ignore your other wake ups. However, Mixing in the wake up options you choose can turn you into a defensive powerhouse, forcing the opponent to choose from a wheel of options to engage you in knockdown. Thank you so much for watching my guide on wake up attacks and tech rolls and tech innate.
This was by far the hardest tutorial I've ever made. Required lots of research and work. So if you enjoyed it, please like or leave a comment and let me know if it helped you out. Have a beautiful day everyone.